Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Body in the Library by Agatha Christie. This is a Miss Marple book. I think it's the only Miss Marple book that I hadn't read until this point, so I was kind of super glad to get to it. I'm going to read you the blurb, uh, even though I think the blurb is just an excerpt, and then I'll go through and check out some of my tabs and share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, uh, the, the county was outraged. Do you mean to tell me, demanded Colonel Bantry, that there is a body in my library? My library? The butler coughed. Perhaps, sir, you would like to see it for yourself. How did the body of an unknown girl get into the library? Why had she been murdered? Who was her killer? It took Miss Marple's wily brain to work out the answer. So I like this, Miss Marple's phone rings, and we get this little paragraph. Nine o'clock to 9.30 was the recognised time for the village to make friendly calls to neighbours. Plans for the day, invitations and so on were always issued then. The butcher had been known to ring up just before nine if some crisis in the meat trade had occurred. At intervals during the day, spasmodic calls might occur, though it was considered bad form to ring up after 9.30 at night. It was true that Miss Marple's nephew, a writer and therefore erratic, had been known to ring up at the most peculiar times, once as late as 10 minutes to midnight. But whatever Raymond West's eccentricities, early rising was not one of them. Neither he nor any one of Miss Marple's acquaintance would be likely to ring up before 8 in the morning. And then the guy who owns the library, he sends for Miss Marple and he tries to get her admitted and uh, we get... I'm afraid nobody is allowed in, madam. Inspector's orders. Nonsense, Palk, said Mrs. Bantry. You know Miss Marple perfectly well. Constable Palk admitted to knowing Miss Marple. It's very important that she should see the body, said Mrs. Bantry. Don't be stupid, Palk. After all, it's my library, isn't it? Constable Palk gave way. His habit of giving in to the gentry was lifelong. The inspector, he reflected, need never know about it. You're gonna contaminate the crime scene. Oh, we get some casual, uh, like, xenophobia, I guess. Yes, with that filthy brute Rosenberg. You know what he's like. You were jealous, that's all. Don't flatter yourself. I hate to see a girl I like. I hate to see a girl I like who can't hold her drink and lets a disgusting Central European pour her about. So yeah, at the start of chapter four, we get uh, St. Mary Mead was having the most exciting morning it had known for a long time. And somebody says, uh, his poor wife, trying to disguise her deep and ardent pleasure. Yes, indeed. I don't suppose she had any idea. Miss Hartnell observed tensoriously. She thought too much about her garden and not enough about her husband. You've got to keep an eye on a man. All the time. All the time. I know. I know. It's really too dreadful. Got to keep an eye on a man. And then here we get, uh, at Gossington, Mrs. Bantry and Miss Marple were sitting in the drawing room. You know, said Mrs. Bantry, I can't help feeling glad they've taken the body away. It's not nice to have a body in one's house. Miss Marple nodded. I know, dear. I know just how you feel. You can't, said Mrs. Bantry. Not until you've had one. I know you had one next door once, but that's not the same thing. And one of the characters is uh, interested in detective stories, and he says, uh, Do you like detective stories? I do. I read them all, and I've got autographs from Dorothy Sayers and Agatha Christie and Dixon Cart and H.C. Bailey. They should have added uh, Ariadne Oliver into the mix, though. We get this, uh, Oh yes, Harper, it's all perfectly possible. But there's still one thing to be done. Churches La Homme. What? Oh, very good, sir. Superintendent Harper tactfully applauded his superior's joke. Although, owing to the excellence of Colonel Melchett's French accent, he almost missed the sense of the words. He was, of course, trying to say, Cherchez l'homme. Look for the man. And it's a joke on the recurring like, light motif of Cherchez la femme, which means just look for the woman. This is an excellent introduction of... Uh, who Miss Marple is as well and why she's a badass. Downstairs in the lounge, by the third pillar from the left, there sits an old lady with a sweet, placid, spinsterish face and a mind that has plumbed the depths of human iniquity and taken it as all in the day's work. Her name's Miss Marple. She comes from the village of St. Mary Mead, which is a mile and a half from Gossington. She's a friend of the Bantries, and where crime is concerned, she's the goods, Conway. She is indeed the goods. Somebody says, uh, that superintendent's got a very nasty eye. You've got that useful thing, an alibi. An alibi is the fishiest thing on God's earth. No innocent person ever has an alibi. Uh, and then we try and figure out whether someone's died of shock and Dr. Metcalf says, if you'd had my experience, Superintendent, you'd know that case history shows the impossibility of prognosticating accurately. People who ought to die of shock and exposure don't die of shock and exposure, etc., etc. The human frame is tougher than one can imagine possible. Moreover, in my experience, a physical shock is often more fatal than a mental shock. In plain language, a door banging suddenly would be more likely to kill Mr. Jefferson than the discovery that a girl he was fond of had died in a particularly horrible manner. 
So I just want to read this page out here because I think this is interesting with the way it handles class. Uh, I think she'd wear her best dress. Girls do. Sir Henry interposed. Yes, but look here, Miss Marple. Suppose she was going outside to this rendezvous, going in an open car perhaps, or walking in some rough going. Then she'd not want to risk messing a new frock and she'd put on an old one. That would be the sensible thing to do, agreed the superintendent. Miss Marple turned on him. She spoke with animation. The sensible thing to do would be to change into trousers and a pullover, or into tweeds. That, of course, I don't want to be snobbish, but I'm afraid it's unavoidable. That's what a girl of, of our class would do. A well-bred girl, continued Miss Marple, warming to her subject, is always very particular to wear the right clothes for the right occasion. I mean, however hot the day was, a well-bred girl would never turn up at a point to point in a silk-flowered frock. And the correct way, and the correct where to meet a lover, demanded Sir Henry. If she were meeting him inside the hotel or somewhere where evening dress was worn, she'd wear her best evening frock, of course. But outside, she'd feel she'd look ridiculous in evening dress and she'd wear her most attractive sportswear. Granted, fashion queen, but the girl Ruby. Miss Marple said, Ruby, of course, wasn't, well, to put it bluntly, Ruby wasn't a lady. She belonged to the class that wear their best clothes, however unsuitable to the occasion. Last year, you know, we had a picnic outing at Scrantor Rocks. You'd be surprised at the unsuitable clothes the girls wore. Fouillard dresses and patent shoes and quite elaborate hats, some of them, for climbing about over rocks and in gorse and heather. And the young men in their best suits. Of course, hiking's different again. That's practically a uniform, and girls don't seem to realise that shorts are very unbecoming unless they are very slender. Uh, one of the characters here, uh, Ramon, Raymond. He says, Ramon was my original professional name, Ramon and Jose. Spanish effect, you know. Then there was rather a prejudice against foreigners, so I became Raymond, very British. And it's just a shame that he had to change his name because of that prejudice, you know. So yeah, all in all, I did enjoy The Body in the Library by Agatha Christie. I would probably give this one a pretty solid 4.25 out of 5. Uh, it was great to get back to Marple as well. Jane Marple is just a badass. I always enjoy any book she's in. And uh, I would recommend this one. Even if it's the first one you pick up, it'd be an okay introduction to Christie. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Body in the Library by Agatha Christie. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.